Okay. <clears throat> Hillary, you're on. Ah, okay. So on the agenda. Um, we'll introduce the meeting. This is the Heritage Preservation Board. Uh, this is the Heritage Preservation Board meeting for Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. Um, it's been so long since I've done this, Kristen, you have to help me. No problem. Do I need to do roll, roll call via Zoom? Yes. All right. So um, I guess- I can call we'll... out your names. Yes, please do that. Okay. Commissioner Storick? Present. Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, not Commissioner Board Member. Board Member Langto? Present. <laughs> Acting Chair Hillary Colhane? Present. Uh, board board member Gallant present and board member Goldberg present okay so let that show that all members are present tonight all right moving on <clears throat> there is no one in the audience oh we have one attendee it's Eric Schmidt oh yay okay so since we have an audience, we have to allow anyone wishing to address the board on matters not on the agenda to speak. If there is anyone on, on, in the audience who wishes to address the board on matters not on the agenda for which they have jurisdiction though, you may raise your hand now. Okay, seeing no hands, we're gonna move on to planning staff report. I have some news for you, a couple different things. Um, first off, I am still the only planner on staff managing the Planning Commission Heritage Board Learning Administrator items. We the will only be one? Doing, yeah, uh, we, have a, we have a consultant, Lorraine Weiss, who picks up some work, but it doesn't help with the building permits and all the other work that comes in every day and questions, um, public inquiries, So um, we are looking to hire someone and hopefully we'll be interviewing next week for that um, if she agrees to a meeting, so we'll see. Um, in addition to that, the planning director has announced that he's going to retire come December of 2021. Wow. Yeah. So Neil and, is retiring. Yeah, he is. He's hit a point where, you know, it, it's getting so complicated to work in this position um, with all the state laws and everything changing all the time that it's a good time to go if you don't want to really dig in and, and have to learn all this new stuff as it's constantly thrown at you uh, and change things constantly. So um, I also am going to retire. What? <laughs> What? Um, what? March. I, I'm delaying a little bit longer than Neil um, for a variety of reasons, but and hopefully we'll be training someone before I go. Um, the city manager has already started having interviews for a new um, community development director to replace Neil, and it appears there might be some overlap where Neil can sort of show him the ropes before he retires in December. And then I'll work with them for two or three months or so before I retire. So hopefully we'll have a pretty good, smooth transition. But I think it's really incumbent on the board with all these changes to make sure your voices are heard and that you're not overlooked in any manner. So it's the new title, Community Development Community Director. Development Director, right. They're gonna- As opposed to Planning Director. Building Director. Trying to up the, I think, status of and funding of the position a bit to try and attract good people who would come in and really be dynamic. You know, when you're when you're a small entity and there's a lot going on, you need you need good people to fill these roles because there's so much to do. You know, you can't spread the workload out like a lot of bigger cities do. Kristen, how many years have you been with Luxford? I've worked here 23 years. Um, the first 13 were part-time because I was raising my kids and the last seven, eight have been full-time. Awesome. 
that's that's a lot of knowledge. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I really kind of prefer that you took over as the community development director, please. <laughs> I, yeah, I think we I'm all not would. sure I have it in me to put that much time into the position. It's going to be, I I have so many interests that I don't want to give up on in order to take a job like that. And there's a lot of night meetings involved in overtime. You know, you have to really want to do that. But I have informed the city manager I'm willing to stay on in a consulting basis if they need me. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll see, Neil there's some do contingencies the same. to that, so we'll see if that works out. So. Oh. Will Neil would it be do the same? Stay. Will what? Will Neil do the same? Or <clears throat> I'm not sure. Hmm. I, I have not asked him that question. This is a conversation I had with the city manager myself. So um, just to let him know, I'm not trying to leave them high and dry. And I, I have to keep working. I just, I think it's time for me to try something new. What about retaining as part of your consulting, just sort of a, um, a link with the heritage board? Like if that could come under your purview. I would be happy to offer that to them if they wanna keep me on in that capacity. So there's well, lots can, to think about can, here uh, with all the changes. So we'll see. I think we would like to request that. So yeah, the time is right. Yeah, and, and how would we go about requesting that, Kristen? Is that something we would do formally or you'll, pass a resolution? You'll all have or? to have your chair write a letter on behalf of the board and send it to the city manager and planning director. Just let them know that I've informed you of my future retirement coming up impending. And um, if you might just want to word it that if Kristen is willing to continue with you as a, on a consulting basis, we'd like to suggest she be assigned to work with us still. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just one last question about that. Um, in terms of composing the letter, just to avoid any Brown Act <laughs> issues, um, is that something we would discuss in a meeting such as this, or is it something that um, that like? maybe I as acting chairman or whoever's the chairman um, in the future writes a letter, like a draft of the letter, and then we all discuss it at the next meeting, or what do you think would be the best protocol for that? That might be the best one, your second option. So start with a draft, submit it to everybody, and then everyone weighs in with any tweaks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll double check with uh, Neil how you can do this if you all want to be participating in the drafting to best not, yeah, to not violate the Brown Act. That's important. Well, the Brown Act wouldn't apply if we're-, we're Well, not it's not really, not, yeah, it's not like you're discussing a project. No, we're not conducting official business whatsoever. In fact, I wanted to suggest later that we all, for the first time, get together and have a beer and we can talk about things that don't have to do business. <laughs> As, as long as you don't discuss any projects um, or of anything course. That, that, of course. Yeah. That's a recommendation. And um, so let's move on because we, we have an individual waiting for us. Um, I also just wanted to let you know that there's been quite a bit of housing turnover, as you probably know, with the market going crazy. And we have several applications for substantial remodels of notable historic homes coming up. So you will be seeing some interesting projects in the next few months, hopefully okay. before I leave. Um, but I'm quite, I quite anticipate that you will see both of them before I leave because um, they're pretty good submittals. They just need some, a few things uh, fixed. So okay. they should so be coming to you guys within the next couple months. So we okay. could have a special meeting instead of a quarterly meeting for those? Um, I'm not sure if they'll come together at the same time. Mm. So, um, so you may have to have two separate meetings on them. We'll see. One is definitely a little more prepared. Than, well, they're both pretty well prepared. So we'll see. If I can get them on the same agenda, that'd be perfect. It never seems to work that way these days. <laughs> right. So, okay. So that's it for staff report. I uh, just wanted to let you know that you do have quite a bit coming up in the near future. We also have another request to delist a home. 
I don't want to discuss it now because I don't want you to, to get into something I haven't noticed. But I think we're going to expect things like this coming up periodically from now on with the pressure to redevelop and the desires of the population that are buying expensive properties here. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now it's time to move on to the public hearing item if you'd like to introduce it, Hillary. Uh, yes, public hearing item number one. It's 15 Rice Lane. The applicant, Eric Schmidt, I believe is um, here tonight. And uh, I suppose we're going to suggest um, whether or not to recommend the removal of 15 Rice Lane from the inventory of historic resources. Right. Did you want to give us a report on that or? Well, very briefly, just for the record, because um, this becomes our, our, our record for your meetings. Uh, I'm sure you've all read my, my staff report. It kind of explains that the building was originally added to the inventory when this downtown district was nominated to the National Register of Historic, uh, of Historic Places. And it was originally rated a D, but is considered sort of a contributor to the downtown. Not really a, a direct contributor, but inadvertently, it's an example of an old housing um, cottage that was once routine or regularly available in the old days. Unfortunately, even though it's been on the inventory, it's it's even at the time it was originally put on there, it had been altered quite substantially, which resulted in the D rating. And then I think it's been altered even more since then um, to a point where you can't recognize it. Um, I walked the site with the historic architect. We, we went on all sides. You can even see the back wall of the additions that surround this house from the parking lot at City Hall. There isn't really any visible original material other than the roof line. Even that the little front porch, which is quite cute, has been altered. Yeah. There's new siding. And um, so with that, the city, um, the historic architect has recommended that it can be delisted, that it doesn't have any real value. And staff supports that recommendation for the board's consideration. Okay. Um, Kristen, I have a question about the other two cottages. Mm -hmm. Ever part of the historic district or... They're not, they're non-contributors in the National Register application. You all have that application in your um, packet, the board member packet of materials. If you read through the National Register district application, you'll find references to those addresses as non-contributors. There's 17 and 13, I think, Rice Lane. Yeah. 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 Now they were 1950s, they, they have no contribution to the downtown. Um, the era of significance for the downtown is late 1800s up into the 1930s, maybe 1930s. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Okay. And the dental building is also non-contributing. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yeah. The dental <laughs> building, yes, it's non-contributing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does uh, does anyone? Let's see. I guess is this the point where Eric Schmidt? Well, uh, yeah, I'm going to allow him to talk. Okay. Eric, you need to unmute. And all I can right. make him visible if you all would like. Yeah. Okay. I just promoted you to a panelist, Eric. You can turn on your camera, I believe. Oh, he went away. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. So Eric, you have both your camera and your self. So there we go. All right. Hello. There he is. Oh, hello. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions for me or um, how would you like me to do this, Kristen? Um, well, you can just be available for questions or you can tell them kind of what your vision is and and what you kind of want to do at the, in the short term. OK. Yeah, um, so my name is Eric Schmidt. I live in Larkspur up on Walnut Avenue. Um, I've lived in Larkspur for nine years. Uh, my daughter goes to St. Patrick's across the street from this property. Um, there are three owners who 
we purchased this property last month. Um, one of the others lives in Rice Lane and the other is local in Mill Valley. So we're all um, always in Larkspur and we've always wanted to, to own something, you know, in the town that we could contribute to the community. Um, the, yeah, I mean, we, when this came up, um, we had been looking for a while and just thought it would be a great opportunity to, you know, add something to the town of Larkspur. And uh, we're still not really clear on, you know, what the future holds for the site. I'm still working with kind of getting an idea of what is possible. And, you know, we hope to work with the city and um, obviously congrats, Kristen, on retiring. But I was definitely looking forward to working with you. Um, you've been great so far. Um, but, yeah, we, you know, we I figured this was the first step to have this delisted. And like you said about the short term plans, uh, the, one of the dentists still has another five-year option, so I don't really see much happening for the next six years um, on this site. But what we had hoped to do um, was we wanted to apply for a, I guess, a temporary use permit. And there's the the parking lot on Magnolia where the dentists park. There's about six spaces um, across from the Italian restaurant. What we were looking to do was to potentially use that space when the dentists are not in operating. One of them is closed on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The other one is by appointment only up to noon on Friday. So basically weekends, it's always vacant. And we were thinking it'd be kind of nice to add something um, for the community. And on weekends, we could have um, kind of different vendors there, maybe like a pop-up shop or um, there's a, a local woman who sells flowers out of a cool old VW van. So kind of like little food, food Oops. truck ideas or concepts, but just have another little fun thing to bring to the community. Um, that was kind of our initial vision, but really this is a, a long-term plan. And we've been, again, looking for a while and just hoping one day we'd have the opportunity to you know, own something in the town that we love and live in. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and I'll just keep watching. Are there any questions for Eric? Well, the only thing before us is, at this point, is delisting mm -hmm. 15. Right. Eventually, what happens will come before us, I presume, as well as planning. Yes, because it's going to impact the historic downtown corridor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, if you have no questions, I'm gonna return him to a, to a visitor and not a panelist. Well, I just, I just wanna be clear. So we can really only ask questions about the delisting, not like what would be the, the plan for the, I understand the dentist, office area and the parking lot next to it but the address 15 rice line if um what the plan would be for that property that space that house right you certainly can ask that oh, okay yeah I'm, I'm out of curiosity like what would be the vision for that then for that specific yeah uh, we're still again we're um just over a month into this and um we are still kind of in the exploring phase and trying to see what, you know, what is possible, what is allowed. Um, you know, obviously it's it's not the most efficient in terms of having housing back there. Um, so maybe there's an opportunity to have, to add a little bit more um, residential space. Um, right now we are, we're working with an architect who he's out of town for two months, but when he gets back, we're gonna start really looking at, um, you know, what could potentially be there. And we also we also recognize that the location of the site is right next to, you know, the fire station and city hall. And we really see almost like a joint effort in, um, in the design and whatever is possible and what we do decide to put there, that it all plays with, you know, downtown Larkspur and kind of the charm that exists there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
Are there any more questions? Okay. Hillary's muted. She's speaking. Oh, she is. I just Sorry. changed yeah. to an attendee. Sorry, I, mean, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, I just had a question. If if this, um, uh, I'm I'm remembering that there was a project that came before the board two years ago that had to do with St. Pat's, and I know this is across the street and not part of that expansion of St. Pat's, but um, but if that project were to come forth again, that would between those two projects that would pretty significantly alter that block of magnolia um, and i'm just mentioning that as sort of something to, to keep in mind in the future um and i know right now we're only looking at number 15 rice lane yeah uh, whether um, just or not so you know listed. hillary that project was withdrawn and the current school management decided it was not needed okay and financially okay. i think somewhat infeasible so. <laughs> okay well, that's and, good. And, and then also, it doesn't really bear on the question before us tonight to to list to delist. So yeah, no, I understand. I just was sort of thinking outside the the conversation. But yes, no, you're right. Hmm. hmm. Did something go out? Yes. Where's Lillian? She's coming back. I fixed it. <laughs> okay, I oh, think. I sorry, there I don't you. know what's going on. But I'm sorry. Yeah, that's me and my inability to manage Zoom correctly sometimes. <laughs> that's uh, okay. We're still here. Um, <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, Eric, I'm going to put you back as an attendee now. Okay. Um, so, do we need to discuss amongst ourselves now, Kristen? Yes, I think okay. I just did that. He didn't go back. There he goes. Okay. okay. Um, well, I I would rely on on the staff's report and the his historic architects' feeling about the building, and also seeing it myself. It seems like well, it's a charming area actually with all the little cottages. Mm -hmm. Not the original historic area. It seems. <laughs> Uh, inadvisable to delist it if someone asks for it like they are. Yeah, and if it was originally a D, uh, yeah. was it was it Dan Peterson or was it Jerry that had it listed as a D? Dan Peterson. Okay. And, and I think that was mainly because of the family. You know, yeah, probably. Not so it much. It doesn't have a lot of architectural integrity. The architectural. Mm -hmm. right. It's important to remember that our program is largely trying to protect architectural integrity in the end. That's kind of what your oversight's about. And if there isn't any to begin with, right. It's kind of pointless to list it. I, yeah. I don't I don't see anything really worth discussing here. I think this is so clearly a non-contributor that's been unfortunately <laughs> trashed through the years and uh, I think we should just conclude very quickly that it should be delisted yeah I agree I would agree I agree I agree so um all in favor of recommending that Wait, 15... somebody needs to make a motion oh all right uh, well that's what I was starting to do but okay <laughs> I'll make a motion that we agree to delist I'll second, and I'll second that. that okay all in favor Aye. 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 Okay, let the record all show that all five board members voted in favor of the motion. And, and Eric, I, I wanna to say too, I really appreciate what you're doing and wish you great luck in your, in your project here. It looks good. And I would second that. It's nice to hear of a community member who might, uh, is thinking about the future and, and you know preserving that special charm of the downtown and it's nice yeah i'm hopeful that there'll be more charm with the dental building once you redo it so <laughs> yeah i love that idea except that's my dentist so now i'm wondering where i'm gonna <laughs> go. uh, uh, yeah well that was yeah. 
that was my dentist too, but they still have five more years there. So they're, gonna, they're not doing anything for, I think, six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm know. torn. Yeah. It would be very cool to have something more charming there or something more fun, but yeah. It's also nice to walk to my dentist. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be a challenge is something we look forward to seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, well, I guess it's time to move on to some business items. Um, now we have to look at electing a new chair and a vice chair. Um, well, <laughs> just, Hillary, I was wondering if you'd like to stay on as chair. <laughs> it sounds like there's some turbulent times ahead. <laughs> Hillary, I, I tell you, I, of, of all of our membership here, I, I think you're the one that's going to be taking the helm through all the turbulence. I, I, oh, you guys. I want to make it. I want to make a motion that Hillary be our. Stop our, it! Our Stop. Chair. Okay, sure. Only if you're the vice chair, Rich. Ooh. Only if you're the vice chair. No, I, well, I, mean, I think we should have some new some new talent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's true. If if Sonia or Carol would like to step in, that would be that'd be wonderful as vice chair. Um, I'm willing to take on the chair role. Um, and spearhead the letter for Kristen. I think that's going to be important to yes, very. retain her. Um, but it, was anybody, Sonia, would you be interested in, in becoming the vice chair? Uh, maybe. Is it, I don't know what it means to be vice chair other than to have to understand how these meetings are run in case the chair is out. <laughs> that's a basically but, what it means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You step okay. in to run the meeting in their absence. Okay. I yeah. think I can learn that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, Richard, are you making a motion for two at once for Hillary? Yes, I am. Well, I'll second it. Okay. All right. All in favor? For... Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Congratulations. That was easy. <laughs> the record show Yay. that there is five members who voted for the motion and no members who voted against. So in the future, just for um, process, we're switching to, um, we're gonna switch to me calling out your names and you individually saying yeah, your name. So oh, it doesn't okay. matter for tonight. I, I think we're good, but we'll, tr we'll do that in the future. We're doing it for the planning commission now too. I have to okay. get to it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. uh, just, just a question really quick, quickly, Kristen, is there any prognosis about being in person again? Well, I was informed I'm doing a personal interview next week with this potential associate planner. So we're moving in that direction where things are starting to get a little more, uh, as long as people are vaccinated. So that's, I think one of the reasons we haven't opened the meetings up yet is that it's in kind of difficult to to manage that you know ensure that people coming to the meeting are all vaccinated mm -hmm. but i over time that might occur could be we'll just have to have someone checking vaccination status at the door um, okay the city manager has not weighed in on that yet i'll have to ask him the okay. question have okay any of the other commissions been meeting in person no, they're all in zoom city still what uh-huh yeah, the, you guys are better suited to a personal meeting than some of the other board commissioners don't in the chair and the council don't seem to mind the zoom format so. So we we have a missing member on on the board now are we are we putting the word out. That that's who Carol is she's filled the position. Oh i'm sorry, but we we had five people. You do. That's, we do have time. <laughs> but we've reduced the size of our board, right? Oh. Well, from seven. Five is all you get now. Six yes. to five. It went from seven to five. Seven, yeah. seven to five. five. That's right. So welcome, Carol. Thank you. Yeah. I, Carol. We will. I, I decided not to fight for the co-chair because I didn't know what it involved either. So I'll <laughs> <laughs> Next time, you'll have your chance. Yeah. <laughs> We like to rotate. <laughs> it was um, fair. 
Okay, so moving along, board member reports. Do we have well, any any I, questions I have, or anything? But I have several things to say, if that's all right. Um, yes. Because along the line, we have been having some work done by former members of the board and uh, former city council person, Jack and, well, Sally Ann Wilson and Jack and Marilyn River and Sonia as well, a current member, and uh, Joan Lundstrom, who was on the city council for many years, have been looking at a couple of things to do to basically spend some money we have. One set of money we have is from the Larksburg Community Foundation and Helen Highcamp, who was a longtime board member, when she passed away or even before she set up a, a special history fund with a Larksburg Community Foundation. And there's about $26,000 in that. People have made donations to it in addition to her bequest. So there's that money to spend. And then lo and behold, we found that from our Larksburg past and present book sales, there's about $40,000 in the city's coffers. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, she's called the finance, what is the title? It's not treasurer anymore, Kristen. It's finance director. Finance director found the money through accounting. So we have that to spend on things. So a couple of projects have come up. One was to have the Larkspur Past and Present book made into an ebook and we priced that out it was about ten thousand dollars and our little committee decided maybe that wasn't the best use of money because our book larks for past and present is john hobel got it uh, uploaded to the website the problem is it takes like five clicks to even find it on our larks for city website yes what one thing we'd like would be to have an easy access to the book on the website. And people could download the walks and the information easily. Were you gonna say something, Rich? No, I agree. It's, it's hard to find and we should improve it. Yeah. So, Kristen, you might need to help us or direct us on that. Yeah, that's one, mm -hmm. two clicks. Uh, there it is. It is. Three, there. Three. It's yeah. three. But you have to really look. Uh, we, in fact, the other thing we were thinking of doing is because we're almost out of our books, we thought, to have them reprinted. So I actually was talking to a printer and told him, you know, he's pretty savvy on this tech business. He couldn't find it on the website for love and your money. We had to huh? do it together. Wow. So I think even if someone knows how to do it, it's it's not intuitive and it could be. Well, you have to know that's a book. That might be part of the problem. Yeah, it mm -hmm. says read about the book. But yeah, so that's what we want to work on. But what we Kristen, think, uh, yeah. Kristen, who, who manages the website? All of us. I tend to be the one who goes in and makes modifications to your page. I put in the book. Uh-huh. I think we need it on the front page of the website somehow. Here's a book. Yeah. Be nice. Um, to make it more usable. So that's one thing. But then we found out also through the finance director that um, there are about 60 books stored at the corporation yard. So our need to reprint it, which was something else we were looking into, can be put off. Yeah. So Books. We're not really selling it. We're kind of giving it away yeah. to realtors and groups that would like it. So that was good to find out we, we don't have to do, we decide not to do an ebook and not to print it right now, even though we've gotten all the materials together. If we at some point want to print it. But the big thing at the idea of Joan Lundstrom is to make trail markers, historic trail markers along our bike paths and maybe the parks that tell history. Because our whole object is to help people, citizens in Larkspur know about our history and our rich history and how fun it is to think about your walking on the railroad right away, what went on there. 
So mm -hmm. a couple of field trips. One was meeting with Julian Skinner, who is the public works director. And we gave him a map of potential sites. And he's looked at that and knows, helping us find out which is in the public right away, which is a private property, which we're not going to try and put a stand on private property. And what's a good material, where the sun would be good, all those kinds of things. He's very Great. well known us. And he would, his department would do the installation of these signs. So today, some of us took a trip over to Tiburon along the Blackie's Pasture area there and up in the Trestle Glen area. Mm -hmm. And we met with the somebody from the Tiburon Foundation and they told us about what costs they have and what size. And so we got a lot of information from that and we'll probably pursue that and then bring it back to all the board to look at. And Sonia has been helping us because we also have to have it uh, be uh, handicap accessible, these signs. There's certain criteria. Sonia's profession and her job knows all about that. So she's been a big help. Great. So that's Love that idea. To report, and we'll be coming back to you with some kind of signs and places where they go. The railroad, of course, is an important part. Um, Piper Park has some interesting angles on the, you can see the boardwalk area there. And then just what happened in the creek. Hmm. So that's what we're working on. And we, everybody's- That's great. That's really great, Lilia. Well, thanks to lots of helpers. We hmm. make yeah. No, that's exciting because that really, that brings the history alive and kids like riding by on their bikes will see those <laughs> markers. I mean, you don't have to be part of a formal tour to appreciate these sites. Yeah, and it just seems like that would be a good way to let people know about our history. Lily, yeah. Lily, I thought, I thought, consider something here. The uh, kids art can become part of this and make these trail markers fascinating. Beyond what, oh, beyond what great! You know, kids' idea. interpretation, kids telling their story, kids, kids uh, creating art about that, about that historic place, uh, would be a real wonder. So think about that. Oh, that's great, Rich. Maybe mm -hmm. you can help us, give us some direction on doing sure. the work and help them see the vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. You know, another thing, did you guys see the article in the IJ about two weeks ago about the Sausalito um, Historic Preservation Board, our equivalent, and they were talking about how they are incorporate how they are incorporating more information about indigenous sites. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wonder if maybe, I know there is one marker over by the flagpole by the gas station on Magnolia and Doherty. Yeah. Related to the Miwoks, but there might be something that could go along mm -hmm behind Rose Garden along the creek there or some other, um, maybe one or two more sites that could acknowledge that history as well. Right, right. I think there was once a site over at Bonaire as well. Well, we had thought about that. Where is that? I haven't, the park I is. That's one of our marker. It's about where the Bank of America is. Hmm. Oh, wow. over that way, really? Well, is it kind of on the creek on the other side or? Well, you remember that whole area has been filled. Then they they lived in the marsh areas and, and fished and um, used the reeds and everything. So there was some kind of a, a site there, a midden site and everything when they developed mm -hmm. on air that they had found. Uh, interesting. Yeah. We actually had thought of doing something along the path there on the new walks. It was one of our. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, especially yeah, for the for Rose Garden. One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Well, keep thinking of ideas. So, <laughs> an idea of marking out where the Rose Bowl used to be. Uh, we have a little bit of trouble um, with ownership there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it turned out to not be a great 
good view, which is too bad. Yeah. Because there's an apartment building there, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's named the Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But so, so some things, you know, they're constraints with ownership of the property. But we'll get yeah. the Rose Bowl in somewhere. Yeah. You know, I had an interesting conversation with um, a local guy here who had this concept of having some sort of struct, sort of um, outline structure somewhere on the bike path where the train tracks come together, like on Baltimore, <laughs> sort of where Baltimore comes into um, Acacia. There's like the old railroad steps that are still there. I don't know if you, right. the stone steps and there's two pillars. Yeah. And um, he had this idea of creating sort of like an outline or sort of a sort of a modernist, um, I don't know, poles or beam or some sort of structure that kind of gives you the impression or or the, a hint of, you know, the, oh. the railroad that used to be there or the station. Uh -huh. they, they did that to Benjamin Franklin's house in Philadelphia. Really? Cool. They did? Mm hmm. Yeah, because the house doesn't exist anymore, right? So they have it sort of like a, yeah, up with just to beams, like the shape of the house. That's, oh, I'll have to look at that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that you know, because that's, that's sort of a place where people naturally congregate anyway. There's a park bench there and there's often lemonade stands. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just thought that yeah. I thought I mean it was kind of a cool concept to me, but I don't know what that would take or what kind of design that would involve or money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. That's right. a neat idea though, because it could be if it had some kind of um, shade or something so that it could even you know contribute to it being like a gathering spot or community space that could of be thing. roof and it is kind of yeah it could be roof because it is sort of like there's it's a very broad area right there right like it's yeah there's, there's space to play with almost um and it's yeah uh, and it's kind of neat because it's near that L lilia what is it the electric uh, that yeah the, the, the electric power station yeah yeah and they have a sign yeah. So yeah, which I thought was that one. that's pretty neat. With all of our interest in electric mm -hmm. vehicles these days, to think that the train was electric, then I think it's kind of neat. Yeah, um, yeah, we sort of went backwards. We were moving <laughs> in the right direction early on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. I think that would be a lot. Like people here would would love like that sort of play with those ideas and yeah, because it's a good meeting spot because it's a real convergence. You know, Palm Hill comes there. Mm -hmm. uh, Baltimore and then you've got the two bike paths that come that it's mm -hmm. it's a real sort of coming together place mm -hmm. you know. yeah yeah and those yeah. pillars and steps are kind of go to nowhere I mean like they're kind of like little like ghost towny <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of neat right. it would be nice yeah. to take advantage of that yeah. is there I mean, any record Lilia of what was built there do you have any well old photos? I, I, yeah, I talked to Doug Archer, who's a, one of our firefighters, and he has all the railroad information. So hmm. he, had, he says he has pictures. Oh, great. He's got an amazing history room. I never did get you all a tour of that. It would be great if we could. It was one of those things we were supposed to do after during a meeting, just break, adjourn, and go over there to see it. And <laughs> I forget why it didn't happen. Well, maybe... It can eventually. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Is this in his home or, or is this in no, the No, it's in the fire station. Interesting. He's got a whole room dedicated to the history of the fire service in, in uh, Marin, and it's fascinating and wow. full of artifacts, like wow. old, old uniforms, you know, fire protective uniforms, that, you know, like big helmets that screwed on and, <laughs> and some some badges and just all kinds of really interesting cool things it's a public right. is that open to the public or not no it's it's one of those things that we have talked in the past about if we can ever get a history room bringing it all out so we can make mm -hmm. it available to the public mm -hmm. yeah he's done a wonderful job curating it and oh, right. we need to make it available but we need a place to display it and what everybody was anticipating having a history room in the future community center which isn't getting built as of yet so 
But okay, apparently they me... got quite a bit of money now. That's good. I mean, I let's think this is like, four... sorry. Well, let's meet at the fire museum for a beer. <laughs> That's good. I'm so, there. So yeah. I, I wanted to mention one other idea while we were at the Tiburon area today. They have renamed what we call a bike path, the old railroad trail. And they have a beautiful sign, railroad ties under it and all that. And they did that so that that made it historic, even instead of calling it a bike path. And I just thought that might be something we want to pursue in Larkspur instead of calling all this bike paths, say the old railroad trail. It also allows for walkers, bikers, scooters, you know, all kinds of activity, even though that's all there now. But um, I thought that was an interesting. Yeah, yeah. A good nod to the history. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it still serves the purpose of being a bike path, but yeah than that but the history gets there and it's a good visual image of what you're walking on biking on yeah yeah unfortunately i've got to get to another another meeting uh so it, oh okay. that's it um take, make a motion that. about the minutes uh, I move that they be approved somebody want a second um carol you have to abstain because you weren't there no <laughs> I do. I second. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all in favor of approval of the May twenty seventh meeting minutes? I guess individually, say aye to Kristen. I'm going to call out your name. Uh, Board member Storick. Uh, aye. Board member Galan. Aye. Board member Colhane. Aye. Board member Langto. Aye. And board member. Goldberg will abstain as she was not at the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's nice yeah. to have a meeting together and one that was relatively easy and stress free because we all agreed on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It wasn't hard. And I thought you did a great job of the minutes, Kristen. Oh, thank you. Very complete. I actually put some real thought into it because you you had your own opinion about certain things. And I wanted to be sure the commission could see that where how you came to your decision. So mm -hmm. has anything happened on that house? Uh, well, it was approved by the planning commission as recommended by the board. Oh, OK. Yeah, but I have not seen the building permit plans that come in yet. They're probably doing their structural work. Mm hmm. So do we need a motion to adjourn? I'll make a I motion. Move. We adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Rich, I'll come in that. Okay. All in favor of adjourning the meeting, say aye. 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 Okay. I move we adjourn. Hey. All right, hey. everyone. Good night, Thank you so much. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 So where do we get on?